Look at that. Okay. We're back. Good morning. Uh, my name is Joe Chelman. I'm a Drupal developer and web designer uh, freelance. And this is the top modules for Drupal 7. I've decided to change the title of the talk to just the book of good modules just because I found a nice book theme in Keynote. So what we're going to do today is just go over some of the modules that if you're a beginning site builder with Drupal that you, some of them you might not have heard of, some of them you have heard of but you don't necessarily know what they do. Um, and so we're just going to go. And this is going to be kind of like Micro Machines Man style, talk real fast, just kind of pepper you with, uh, with a lot of ideas for things to investigate later. If you want to go into more depth on anything, we can do that um, after the talk or um, you know, throughout the camp. Just find me anywhere. And um, yeah, let's get started. So as I say, the book of good modules. Uh, let's see how do you, yeah, there we go. This is the, uh, the, alternate, the alternate cover. Um, <clears throat> so things to keep in mind, um, there are nearly 5,000 full modules available for Drupal 7. Um, obviously, you're not going to use them all. Not all of them are good. Um, but we love all our children equally. We're glad to have them all. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, this talk will be helpful. But as with anything, the, your mileage is going to vary. The module that's suitable for your project that you're working on, uh, the choices that you might want to make might be different than the ones I would want to make. But these are just ideas. And uh, in general, you want to avoid installing everything. Um, just because a module looks good, you don't want to install it and leave it there and have a site loaded full of code, which will you know, potentially cause security problems or performance problems or who knows what. So just you know, choose carefully. And the idea of this talk is to help you do that. Hey, there we go. OK, so we'll start with the uh, essential slash wicked popular list. Um, so uh, has anybody here not heard of views module? Raise your hand. OK, we got a couple people. I think maybe exactly one. But uh, anyway, Views is, is probably one of the first modules you're going to want to install. It uh, allows you to make lists of stuff at its very basic level. But basically, anytime you want to do anything where you might want to say, show me everything that was posted during a certain time span, or everything that's of a certain type, or a million other things, Views is where you want to go. Panels is a, a module by the same uh, maintainer, which lets you set up pages and divide them up into regions and choose custom content that goes in them. You can do this uh, similar, I mean the idea is to take what the Drupal block system lets you do as far as putting things in sidebars and all that kind of stuff, but make it easier and make it something that you do all through the Drupal UI. It's incredibly handy. Uh, IMCE is a file manager. Um, I don't remember what it stands for, actually, but it's a way to manage your images. Uh, this is available for Drupal 6 and Drupal 7. And uh, there's also IMC MK Dir, which is a separate module that you would need to let that same file browser create directories in your file repository. So that's handy. WYSIWYG is an add-on for Drupal that will let you, just like it says, use pretty much any WYSIWYG editor that's available on the web and use it in your Drupal site. Drupal, as you know, does not come with a WYSIWYG module, which uh, causes a lot of consternation for a lot of people just starting out. So WYSIWYG module is a good place to look for that. And if you want to use it with IMCE, that file manager, you need another module called WYSIWYG IMCE Bridge. Webform is a module that you can use for creating web forms, questionnaires, surveys, contact forms, pretty much anything you want. And uh, a relatively recent addition to that family is Form Builder, which if you've never seen it, anybody in here who's ever used Web Form Module but has not used Form Builder, get on that. It's awesome. Um, it's a visual form builder. Drag and drop lets you drag in the elements, and it's a lot easier to deal with than the, uh, the Web Form uh, Builder that comes just in the core module. <coughs> Rules Module lets you set up condition, uh, basically conditional actions. So when a certain thing happens on your Drupal site, you want another thing to automatically happen. Rules module is how you would do that. Basically, I mean, that's in the abstract, that's how it works. But just about anything you want to happen when something else happens, rules module is where you should look. Flag lets you do basically flags in, in the way that we mean them usually in, uh, in a developer sense. 
like bookmarks or any kind of uh, like different kinds of voting. There's also voting API for, for voting specifically in ratings, but flag module will let you do all kinds of stuff where you want to mark um, nodes or other entities in Drupal 7. Backup and migrate module is pretty much just what it says. It lets you backup your Drupal database. There's also a backup migrate files, which I'm not sure what status that's at, but if you want to be able to backup your files directory, there's an add-on for backup migrate that will let you do that. But anyway, backup migrate generally deals with your database, backing it up, making restores, and uh, it allows you to migrate things between websites or just to um, work within your own single Drupal installation. Path Auto will let you set up patterns for your content and other, other entities on your site so that when one is created, you get a nice URL alias associated with it automatically without having to do anything else. Um, so basically that just means that you can allow your content to be at something other than node slash number um, automatically. Very handy. Global Redirect is a good uh, module to use in combination with Path Auto, and it makes sure, uh, one of the main use cases for it is that it makes sure that your content is not available at more than one URL. Um, and so you can, it kind of lets you have a canonical URL for each piece of content, which is, you know, generally it's URL alias, which most of the time you create with Path Auto. Workbench is a family of modules that attempts to address some of the shortcomings that Drupal has out of the box from, content man, uh, from a content management perspective. So it gives you a dashboard. Of course, Drupal 7 has a dashboard module built in, but Workbench is kind of a much more powerful answer to that. So you can see recently edited content. This is just out of the box. It lets you see recently edited content and other things in a nice dashboard, but then you can also add on things like workflows that let you set up complicated editing uh, workflows if you're working at something like a, you know, a journalism site where you have multiple editorial levels, all that sort of thing. Workbench is where you should look for that. If you're building an e-commerce site, Ubercart and Drupal Commerce are the two modules for Drupal 7 that you should look at. Um, they uh, have a, a similar kind of uh, origin story, but they're two divergent ways of, slightly divergent ways of dealing with uh, e-commerce. They're both very, very good. The main differentiating factor I would point out is that Ubercart treats products as nodes. Pretty much, um, I think that's, pretty, that's the same in Drupal 7. And Drupal Commerce is a little more abstract, so it, it takes a little more setting up, but it, it separates nodes from products. It just, it, products are entities, which then can be manipulated in ways that are a little more abstract. So depending on the way your business works, uh, one or the other of these might be uh, the better choice. You'll just have to play with them and try. Um, feeds module lets you bring in RSS feeds into your site, and it's also a handy module to use for migrating content. So if you have an old website running something like you know, WordPress, there are WordPress-specific solutions, but if you have another uh, system that can publish things in feeds, you can use Feeds module to bring that content into your new Drupal 7 site, and uh, it's great. And then uh, finally, under the Wicked Popular category is uh, Boost, which is a module, a performance module that will let you get static uh, rendering of your Drupal pages. And if you're in a shared hosting situation, if you're using Drupal on a shared web host, um, it is basically essential. Um, it just lets you get around a lot of the uh, the overhead of having to load up Drupal for every page load. So that's those. We drink and we move on. Okay, so for managing images and other media, we have a few. Um, of course, Media Module is new for Drupal 7 and it's uh, in heavy, heavy development being worked on all the time, but it is a pretty great um, solution for managing media. It lets you do images, it lets you do all kinds of files, it lets you do stuff on the internet. So you can bring in, say, YouTube videos and have them stored at, like, have references to them stored in a media library that you can then reference in your content. Pretty slick. File field sources is an enhancement for the built-in Drupal file field that lets you select different places from which those uh, files are drawn. Normally, if you add a file field, it's just, okay, I have a file field, I'm going to upload something, and you click a button and you upload something there. But 
With file field sources, you can tie into IMCE, you can tie into remote files on the internet, you can do all kinds of stuff, and it gives you more options for every single file field to draw in files. File field paths ties into the core token module and lets you do things like, it, it basically just lets you choose where those files are going to be saved in a more powerful way than what Drupal has um, built in. So if you don't want all of your images to just li be living in your root files directory, and you want to be able to say, okay, you know, files slash user ID slash node title slash whatever um, to build up a complex directory structure, file field paths is a good way to do that. Image JavaScript crop will let you use a nice uh, JavaScript interface to crop uploaded images and uh, create derivatives of your originally uh, uploaded images. Very nice. And uh, image resize filter is kind of similar. It will, it's, an, it's an input filter that works with text formats in Drupal 7, so that usually this uh, makes sense if you're working with a WYSIWYG editor, but if somebody resizes, uh, say you upload a huge image, and you don't want to present it that way um, publicly, if you resize the image visually in a WYSIWYG editor or by editing the attributes in the HTML, image resize filter will note that you've done that and generate a resized, usually smaller, we assume, but you know, could be a larger version of that same image and save it out. So you'll have that saved image and you don't have to worry about loading something huge. And it also saves your uh, users who might not be as savvy with HTML from uh, having to do that in advance in Photoshop or whatever. Uh, I don't know how this next one is pronounced, if it's pluplload or PL upload, but it's a way to tie into media module and other various modules to allow multiple file uploads at the same time. Uh, using HTML5, Silverlight, Flash, there's a whole bunch of stuff um, that it will uh, allow you to do. And it doesn't do a whole lot by itself, so you need to look at it and see if the uh, other modules that it ties into are ones that would be helpful to you. Image Cache Actions will enhance the, it's now called Image Styles in Drupal 7. Drupal 7 in the standard installation profile has small, medium, and large. Um, I think that's what they're called. And uh, Image Cache Actions will let you create some other versions of those that are even more powerful than just resizing and cropping and some of the things that are built into Drupal 7. Transliteration will deal with file names that have either characters that aren't necessarily easy to use on the web, like just as simple as spaces or um, non-ASCII characters, and it will convert all that stuff for you so that you don't run into problems with uh, you know, content delivery networks or just general web uh, browser issues. And then uh, MediaElement.js and MediaFront are two modules that will deal with the playback of movies in a way that's compatible with HTML5 and also includes Flash fallbacks. So um, that's where we're at so far. Do we have any questions so far? Good. I wasn't going to answer them anyway. Okay. <clears throat> Field add-ons. Um, so these are different uh, modules that will enhance the... Uh, the different kinds of fields that you can add to your, to your uh, content in Drupal 7. Date is pretty much just what it says, uh, date and time, and uh, there's also a calendar module that, that works with views to let you uh, use those date fields to display nice calendars. Um, link field will do, uh, just gives you a nice way to, to do links, and I'm, I'm not sure if it actually does link checking or not, but, uh, but it's, it's a nice way to uh, let you do links without having to just use a plain text field. Likewise, email field will do uh, will check to make sure that an email is a valid email for you. HMS field that's uh, not Her Majesty's ship. That's hours, minutes, and seconds. So when uh, for times when date field is not appropriate for just the storage of time, like if you want to indicate the length of an audio track or a movie or something in a field, HMS field is where you might want to look for that. Select or other gives you the combination of a pop-up menu that gives you a list of options and then directly attached to it is the other um, if uh, one of those options doesn't apply. just saves you from having to do those things in two separate fields. References. Uh, this was built into CCK in the Drupal 6 version but has been broken out into its own module when fields went into Drupal 7 core. So this lets you make references to other nodes, other users, um, and uh, will give you things like an autocomplete list of your users or your nodes or whatever. 
Likewise, field group was uh, excuse me was broken out into its own module for Drupal 7, so that just like it says lets you group fields. It's pretty much a visual or semantic kind of thing. If you want to do something like what uh, CCK3 multigroups, if anybody's ever heard of that, I'm assuming that if we're largely beginners in this room, you might not have heard of that. But if you want to be able to have a group of fields that you can then duplicate en masse in a uh, in a piece of content, field collection module is how you would do that. Um, so that's just something you can file away and take a look at later. Um, I used to have embedded media field in here. It is still available for Drupal 7, but you don't really need that anymore now with uh, media module. This is something that will let you take an embed code or a URL of, say, a YouTube video or a Vimeo video, you know, different things like that, and bring it in to your uh, Drupal 7 site as a field. But uh, yeah, you only need the uh, family of media modules for that now. So moving on, uh, these are some modules that will help you at, with development in your Drupal site. Drush is not actually a module, it's a command line utility and I could try to recommend it highly enough but I don't think I could. Um, even if you're not comfortable with the command line now, Drush makes working with Drupal so pleasant that uh, it's worth learning in my opinion. Um, it can do all kinds of stuff and some things that are entirely doable, like everything that you can do with Drush is entirely doable in other ways, but most of it is kind of by hand, and I uh, really cannot recommend enough that everybody take a look at Drush. Um, we have one or maybe two sessions, maybe more here, that, uh, that look at Drush, and you would be well served to do that, in my opinion. Um, then Devel and Devel Generate modules. Uh, Devel is, a, is just a nice module. When you're in development on your website, it lets you inspect nodes and like see all of their fields and all the kind of crazy data that, that's uh, included in those, as well as a bunch of other things that are helpful if you're more on the development side of your Drupal site. But when you're just getting started and figuring out how nodes are built and just what kinds of things are in, say, a form, um, through Drupal's form API, Devel module can help you inspect all that stuff. And Generate will help you, uh, I, th I think um, if this might have been talked about in the last talk, but it'll help you generate content, generate menus, content types, all kinds of stuff to help you flesh out your Drupal site when you're working on your theme uh, so you don't have to type things over and over again. And then the, the next several modules are very helpful for deployment um, and keeping things, like if you're working in a, in the way that it's generally recommended that you work on any website, but especially with Drupal where you have staging sites, maybe a testing site, and then your production live site, using features and other modules that go with it is really handy. It lets you, uh, this is a, something you might hear about a lot when you get into Drupal development, it deals with exportable stuff. So Drupal keeps a lot of things in the database, definitions of content types, views, pretty much a lot of stuff. And Features Module is a way to help you along getting that stuff out of your database and into code, which is nice for performance. It's a little bit of a performance boost, but even nicer is that it lets you take that stuff and put it into version control so you can keep track of what you're doing and roll back changes if you make mistakes or anything like that. So Features Module just mostly gives you a, a user interface for dealing with that stuff, and StrongArm helps you get Drupal's variables table for different configuration options that wouldn't otherwise be available into, your mo uh, into a module. Boxes module lets you take blocks that you've defined and get those into features. And context module is kind of related. It lets you set up different contexts across your Drupal site. And the, the way I normally use it is to kind of get around the, um, the Drupal blocks system, which can be kind of a pain for setting up which blocks you want to appear in which sections of your website. So with context module, you can set, using various criteria, different sections or different conditions that apply across your Drupal site for when blocks should appear, for when different, you can add in different um, HTML classes that will appear in your theme in different sections, and there's all kinds of conditions, and it's pretty slick. So good to check out. Hacked module will, it's a way to help work on the security of your website. It will not hack your site for you. It will not prevent your site from getting hacked. But what it does is indicates when you might have modified core uh, Drupal code, which you generally should never do. And if it ever happens without your knowledge, that would be bad because that could indicate that your site has been hacked. So installing this module will help you find uh, instances where that has happened. 
Diff module will work with things like features, it works on content, and it will let you compare differences um, in the, you know, one of the nicest cases in, is in looking at differences between revisions of content. So whenever you save a node in Drupal, you can tell on a content type basis that you want to actually keep track of revisions to that stuff. And if you want to be able to see differences between those, diff module is where you go for that. It can also work with code. Um, variable module is a good one for developers. It gives you a nice API that will make working with Drupal's variable system a little nicer. Uh, I'll say no more about that, but if uh, that piques any kind of interest or you're, if you're a developer, check it out. Okay, so let's take a look at some stuff related to theming. Um, Display Suite, um, if anybody was here last year, you know that's one of my favorite modules on Earth. Um, it is similar to something like Panels, except it works at the content level. Um, so you can take your different fields and you can lay them out in regions, which you in Drupal 7 you can define those yourself, although Display Suite comes with a ton of layouts. But if you want to be able to do something really easy, like take these fields and put them on the left side, and then have on the right side all these uh, other fields, Display Suite is a nice way to do that. That's just one very simple thing that it lets you do. But it's quite powerful and gives you a whole bunch of power over the display of your content. Panelizer is a relatively new module that attacks the same problem, but more from a panel's perspective. So if, while looking at these modules, you decide that you like the, uh, the panel's way of doing things, Panelizer will let you do that on a per node basis. So it basically will let you, uh, as a site administrator, set up content types that can then be panelized, which means that you can have a panels layout apply to only a single node and do that all in the Drupal user interface. It's pretty sweet. Theme key is a way to switch themes based on different conditions that you define. Um, I guess uh, if you... I don't know how much uh, to go into that, but um, <laughs> if you have um, different sections of your site that you want to display multiple themes, but you want it to still be a single website, look at Theme Key. That's a good way to go about that. Um, Colorbox is one of many uh, of the sort of light box or uh, going way back, thick box, any of those uh, JavaScript modules that will let you do things like, I want to click an image and have it pop up, you know, black out the screen and pop up a... Uh, you know, basically a single view of that one piece of content. Colorbox is my favorite way of uh, dealing with that issue. Um, so uh, I guess I'll just say no more. Um, and uh, that that module, if you're going to use, you don't have to use it. Uh, it's Drupal module, but uh, it's a nice, quick way to get you started with that. And Libraries API is a way of managing different JavaScript libraries like Colorbox or any of the others that are like that. Um, and Colorbox module happens to require it. There are a bunch of other modules that do as well. But if you're uh, managing different kinds of jQuery libraries with your Drupal 7 site, you may uh, end up needing to install Libraries API. And then the other ones in that right column are all themes. So Zen is uh, actually, I guess, the yep, they're all, um, the first three are base themes. So the, the expectation generally with a Drupal site is that you're coming to it wanting to create a custom site with your own design and everything. So you could build your Drupal theme completely from scratch, and people do it all the time, and it's a perfectly fine way to go. But if you want to start with a nice foundation that will provide, excuse me, that will provide nice, uh, nice classes and you know different hooks in the uh, in the template file and just all kinds of stuff, it's nice to start with a base theme. So Zen is a uh, is pretty much my favorite. Um, it uses, uh, it uses SAS, which is a CSS preprocessor that uh, I'm trying to remember if there's a session that talks about that. But if there is and you're a themer, you might consider checking that out because it's pretty nice to be able to use a preprocessor to handle some of the drudgery that uh, can be involved in working with a large CSS uh, code base on a Drupal theme or really any, any kind of theming work. So Zen has that and it's got a bunch of other stuff. It's responsive, um, which, you know, if that's a buzzword that, that people don't know, means that it, you can have the same set of styles and everything, uh, all the same files, but it will respond to the browser width size, it responds uh, and you know will be presented nicely on a mobile site, that sort of thing. So Zen has all that stuff. Omega is one that I'm a, I personally am a little less familiar with, but I know a lot of people like it because it was one of the first Drupal 7 themes to be available that was also responsive. 
and there's at least one session here that, uh, that will be dealing specifically with Omega, so um, I don't know much about it. I may be there. Um, Fusion is another theme that's, uh, that was very, very popular in Drupal 6 and that I think is almost ready for Drupal 7. Uh, but it's a, it's a grid-based theme uh, with some nice, uh, it adds a couple of add-on modules that go with it. And uh, it can be very nice for theming as well. So it's all just kind of on personal preference and what suits your workflow. So you can check all those out. Rubik is an administration theme. So Drupal, of course, can have themes that are presented to the public and then themes that are presented to content editors and administrators. And Rubik is on that side. Um, it's very clean and uh, it's very nice. And uh, check it out if you're looking for an administration theme. Okay, so here are a few that deal with content management. Views bulk operations is a module that ties into views that lets you, among other things, override some of the built-in content administration screens that are built into Drupal 7. And it lets you add on more actions. It lets you uh, say on the default content overview, if you don't think there are, if there are fields on that uh, screen that you think should be there and are not, or some that you don't want, you can use views bulk operations to override some of that stuff, and it's all powered by views, so uh, so you know it's good. Node queue is a, a module that uh, will let you do node ordering. So the idea is that you create basically buckets that can then contain modules that you can then drag into uh, any order you want. So uh, basically, if you're looking for a way to order modules in a custom way, node queue is a, a very popular uh, way of dealing with that problem. Node clone, just like it says. It just basically adds a clone tab onto every node, uh, node edit form to let you uh, just clone that piece of content. Um, be careful with the, com uh, generally speaking, it's going to work with most content types, but every once in a while you might run into something where clone doesn't pick up all the changes. So just watch for that when you're using it. Taxonomy manager is a, a way of managing your taxonomy vocabularies on your Drupal site in a more visual way. Um, say no more. Add another. Again, this is one that pretty much is just like it says on the tin. It just adds at the end of your content editing forms after you've completed uh, one, instead of just hitting submit and viewing whatever it was that you just did, if you're in a, if you're on a roll and you're adding a lot of content at once, you can just have the add another button which will save, hey, sorry, um, that will save what you were working on and start you right off with a new one, just to save some clicks. TAC Lite is Taxonomy Access Control Lite. Um, there is a non-Lite version, but for some reason it seems like most people use the Lite one. I don't know why. But uh, if you're looking for a way to control access to your website, make some nodes private, or have some things that are only under the control of certain, uh, a certain subset of your administrators, Taxonomy Access Control is one way to do that. There's also a, uh, a module that goes with Workbench that will solve the same problem. There are a lot of modules that do that. If you're searching for that stuff on drupal.org um, slash project slash modules, you would look for uh, at user access um, modules. So automatic node titles, um, which is uh, spelled as one word on, the, on that project, I'm not sure why, um, and uh, automatic entity label, deal with the problem, it's not really a problem, but sometimes it's a problem, of every node requiring you to enter a title. So there may be certain kinds of content where you just, you don't need a title, or it should be something that's automatically assigned so you don't have to type it every time, that's based on another field. So let's say you wanted to add a date field, and you want all of your content to say just, you know, something, something created on, you know, such and such date. You can use in Drupal 7, it seems like the better solution for this is automatic entity label, but automatic node titles is the one from Drupal 6. It is on Drupal 7 now as well in a stable release, so you can look at them both. Um, I'd point you a little more toward automatic entity label, but if you're looking for a solution to create your titles automatically, either to save typing or because it just doesn't make sense in your particular workflow, automatic entity label will help you with that. And then context admin is a panels-based way of adding contextual administration links and other features to your website. So if you don't want to you know, deal with block visibility settings or something like that to try and add edit this links or you know, create a new blah on different screens throughout your website, you can take a look at the context admin module to help you with that. Another drink, any questions so far? 
Okay, here we go. So here's a few that deal with navigating your website. So menu block is one of my favorites uh, for, for this kind of thing. Drupal will provide you a block for every set of menus that you create, every, every custom menu that you create in Drupal's menu system. It will give you a block um, associated with that, but menu block enhances that almost immeasurably. Um, you can create multiple blocks of the same piece of navigation, and then you can do all kinds of stuff uh, depending on the context of the, of the node that you're looking at or where you are on the website. Where that uh, node is on the menu system, menu block can respond to those changes. And it lets you, basically, anytime you want to do something a little more with uh, the navigation on your Drupal site, menu block is almost always the first place that I look. Menu attributes in, uh, expands the number of HTML attributes that are available for you to uh, enter when you're creating menus on your Drupal site. So if you want to add custom classes, or you want to add an ID, or, add, or set the target attribute, or many, many other things, menu attributes will give you a slew of, um, of things to uh, enter on those, and you don't have to create your own custom module for it. Redirect will let you create uh, redirects from a given path to another thing, uh, whether that's something on your Drupal site or another resource somewhere else on the internet, whatever you want, uh, you can use redirect for that. It was called uh, path redirect, I think, in Drupal 6, but redirect by itself is the Drupal 7 version. Pathologic will work with, uh, it helps solve broken link problems when you move from a staging site to a live site. Uh, it can also help you if you're switching domains. It's an input filter that will kind of go through any, uh, any links that it finds and change them uh, without your having to do anything to make sure that they just work. Um, it's a little bit like magic. Uh, it can be a little irritating sometimes uh, if, uh, you know, when you're configuring it to make sure that it has exactly the behaviors you want. But in most cases, just out of the box, it's kind of magic, so you can check that out. Um, these next three deal with breadcrumbs, which uh, is still sometimes a little bit of a nightmare in, uh, uh, when you get beyond the simplest cases. Custom breadcrumbs lets you uh, set up tokens that will show a breadcrumb in whatever format you want, with you know, whatever entries you want, on a content type, uh, a per content type basis, and I think per taxonomy, various other things. Um, menu breadcrumb will make sure that uh, it will basically let you use other menus than, uh, I, I'm trying to remember if this is the, the case in Drupal 7 now, but, uh, but anyway, it, it lets you be more, it lets your content be more aware of what menu it's in and then assign the breadcrumb according to the menu that it, that, that piece of content appears in. You're not restricted to just the navigation uh, menu that's built into Drupal 7 or the main menu, whatever. Um, Hansel Breadcrumbs is a pretty complex module for uh, dealing with really obscure, um, or not obscure, but it lets you get into some very obscure configurations for your breadcrumbs. And one nice thing about Hansel that I think the others don't uh, provide is that it, it's exportable. So as you're creating your crazy configurations to solve your breadcrumb issues, um, you can get those into code. So that's worth looking at. And here are a few more. Um, just a grab bag. So domain access module lets you set up on a... I'll back up. In Drupal 7, as with uh, Drupal releases for, since time immemorial, it seems, um, you can use one Drupal code base to host multiple websites, um, which, you know, can be useful. But domain access lets you do things like have a single Drupal code base that's not using the normal Drupal multi-site system and do all kinds of crazy stuff with those, depending on the, the domain name that somebody's coming in with. So you can do things just as simple as switching themes, but you can uh, also set up what are basically affiliate sites so you could do things based on location. So you, if you have, say, a site for each state, if, you, if you're um, in the US and you want to have different regions or different states or whatever, you can set up subdomains for each one of those and then everybody can have access. You can have super administrators that have access to the entire network of sites and can do all kinds of stuff all over those the way you might normally do, but then you can break things up so that people who are from this region or this state only have access to certain kinds of content 
for, for the purposes of editing and content creation and stuff. Or you can say, all right, this person created a piece of content over here in this region, but we want it to show up in this other region as well, but not these other ones. Domain access will let you do stuff like that. Um, and a lot of other things, so you can take a look at that. Uh, Drupad is a module that lets you do administration of your Drupal site from an iOS device. So, uh, you know, so named because of the iPad, because I think that was where it started, but it also works for iPod touches and iPhones and all that kind of stuff. Um, search by page is an add-on to the built-in, now I guess if you're really serious about Drupal search, most of the time uh, people will be looking at Apache Solar. But if you want to stick with the uh, built-in search, you can use search by page module to, instead of indexing just the content of nodes or you know, what have you, entities, Search by page will index the entire content of a rendered page, including you know, whatever blocks you've put on there, just basically whatever appears on a given page, search by page will index that, and then will include links to those, uh, to those pages. So it can be something that makes a little more sense if you're thinking about uh, search in the way, in, you know, in a visual kind of human terms way. Services module is a way to publish content from your Drupal site in formats other than HTML. So the most popular use case for this right now is things like powering a mobile app using Drupal as your backend. So there, there have been cases where people would build, say, a Flash site um, and use Drupal as the backend of the Flash site for the purposes of managing the content, but then pu uh, pushing out the actual content not as HTML, but as, uh, you know, something that they're, as, you know, XML or... RSS or JSON or just various formats that can power another system. So if you're looking at a way to do something like that, services module will be the first place to look. Field validation is a way of adding custom field validation through the Drupal user interface. You can do this through code, of course. You can do anything through code. But field validation will let you do things like create regular expressions that will check various fields to see if they're in the format that you want them to be. Module filter is a good one as you start getting into having a large number of modules on your Drupal site. It breaks down, of course, the Drupal 7 module page has field sets that are collapsible for different packages of modules. But it starts out with all of them expanded. You have to scroll way down the page to look at all that stuff. So module filter creates a an, uh, an kind of ajax -y way of browsing your modules, and it condenses the page considerably, adding on the left side all of the package names, and then you can click those, and it'll just disclose them on the right. So it's kind of like uh, the vertical tabs that went into Drupal 7 at the bottom of your content editing page, but it's for your entire modules page. So that's nice. Meta tag module is good for uh, SEO purposes and other things. lets you deal with you know, your page titles, your meta descriptions, uh, your open graph API tags for things like how your site is going to appear as a Facebook snippet, uh, snippet, snippet um, when, uh, when you share something on Facebook. Meta tag will deal with all that kind of stuff. Uh, Migrate module is a fantastic module for bringing, website, uh, for bringing content from one site to another. Um, and this can be this can help you get from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7 in, if you have you know, crazy, uh, crazy custom content that won't upgrade cleanly. Uh, it can also be useful for bringing in things like from, say, WordPress. It does require some, uh, some coding knowledge uh, in the general case. I think you might not need much uh, for WordPress migrate, but don't quote me on that. I haven't used it yet. Um, <clears throat> but it's, it's basically the best way to do this stuff, and there's a, I think maybe the only migrate session is happening right now, but if this is something that you want to um, look into. We do have a big time expert on that. Uh, Ashok Modi is the guy and um, he'll tell you all kinds of stuff about it. One of my favorite things about it is that it lets you test uh, migrations. So you can, you can try something and if you screw up, just roll it back and it's as if nothing ever happened and you don't have to do manual database updates to do that. So if you're migrating content, check out Migrate. Drupal for Facebook will let you do all kinds of stuff with Facebook in your Drupal uh, site. So it lets you create Canvas pages, it lets you do things like log into my website with Facebook, basically any of the stuff that the Facebook uh, API will support, Drupal fa for Facebook will help you do that. Um, and Twitter is the similar answer for, um, for Twitter. 
So you can do things like bring in tweets from you know from your from your Twitter stream and place those in a block without having to uh, and which would then let you do things like theme them in a in a custom way, which can be a little bit of a pain sometimes using Twitter widgets through JavaScript or what have you. And OAuth module is a module that you'll need to use Twitter so that you can authenticate yourself um, with Twitter. Malum and reCAPTCHA are a couple of spam prevention techniques. Malum is the one that uh, comes from, I'm pretty sure it comes from Acquia, and uh, it's pretty nice in that it will, uh, once you install it and get your key, there's a free, uh, it's, if you've ever used something like Akismet in WordPress, it's the same, it's basically the same kind of answer to, to that deal, where you get a key, you install the thing on your site, and then it automatically checks uh, content that's posted in ways that you, you set up, um, usually comments. But if you allow anonymous users to submit notes for some reason, you can hook it up to those. You can hook it up to web forms. And it will check all that stuff and use Bayesian filters and other you know, kinds of techniques to check the content to see if it looks like spam. And if it thinks the thing that's being posted might be spam, it will present that person with a CAPTCHA. If it doesn't think so, it lets it in without any further intervention. So that means that you don't have to present a CAPTCHA to every single anonymous user. You can actually check their content first. Um, reCAPTCHA is you know, pretty much the, the best uh, of the CAPTCHA systems. And if you want to be presenting that stuff, um, if you find that Malum is maybe being a little too permissive and you can't configure it right, then reCAPTCHA is a good uh, fallback for that. It's the one that pretty much everybody uses these days with the two words, um, at least one of which is almost completely illegible. <laughs> um, and then uh, finally on this slide is radioactivity module, which is, um, uh, let me just say, the, the statistics module that comes in Drupal 7 is a nice way, uh, a nice built-in way to track what things are popular on your website, but it is a kind of a performance nightmare. Um, just has uh, a lot of database activity. So radioactivity module is a, is a way around that. Um, so that you can disable mo uh, statistics module. And you should. Um, <clears throat> so uh, you can use radioactivity module to take a look at which um, modules on your site are popular. Um, and it's called radioactivity because the idea is that things get hot and then they have a half-life, uh, like a decay period over which they start to become less popular. So it's, it's just a way of managing and uh, visualizing or you know, understanding which, which bits are popular. I think there's a chance that, that might... Okay, yeah. So if you want to find out more about different modules, you can, of course, talk to me. Um, you can talk to anybody. You should go to LA Drupal Meetups. Um, they happen many, many times a month. I think there's at least one every week. And um, I know there's, there's people from out of town here. I know we have members of the community here as well. But um, they're great. I, I myself have been in LA not even two years yet, but going to the meetups was one of the first things I started doing, and it's been great. So um, recommend them highly. You can also, it just in terms of, that's of course just a general thing, but you can also talk about modules and whatever else. But if you're looking specifically for modules, of course the Drupal slash project slash modules page is the uh, place to go for everything. It does have usage uh, statistics, so you can check out which modules are the most popular. And uh, just because it's popular doesn't mean it's gonna be right for you, but um, you know, Everybody else is jumping off that bridge, so why not? Um, <clears throat> and then uh, DrupalModules.com is a, a third-party website, which has a nice way of browsing all the same data, uh, but it also has things like ratings and, uh, and comments on uh, different modules, which may at some point become to Drupal.org, but for now, uh, it's a nice way to uh, search for things. DrupalWatchdog.com is the website for Drupal Watchdog magazine. And uh, articles, uh, I'm not exactly sure how the publishing works for that because I've only ever read it on the website. But um, there is the magazine, and I think that the most or maybe all of the articles that uh, go into the magazine, which is published quarterly, or may, I, I think it's maybe twice a year. Uh, but anyway, most of those articles or all of them will end up on the website, and there will frequently be tidbits about different modules that are on there. It's a good place to check that stuff out. And then uh, Lullabot, one of the uh, big Drupal shops uh, around, has a, a series on their blog called Module Monday. And you can't, uh, as far as I could see, look at just those, uh, those posts 
in a just like a, they don't have a view of those that I can see, um, but they do have an RSS feed. So if you're savvy with a uh, Google reader or some other kind of RSS reader, you could subscribe to that. They highlight modules that are generally a little bit less known. Quite a few of the ones that are that are in this presentation came from uh, my following that. So uh, props to them. And then another way that you can uh, check some stuff out is looking at popular uh, popular installation profiles. So. Uh, it's a fairly recent development in, Drupal, uh, in the Drupal world that you can go to drupal.org and download a distribution of Drupal that comes not just with Drupal core and not just with a make file that you can run, but it comes with a bunch of modules just built in and it's purpose built for a specific solution. So examples of this would be things like open publish for, uh, for like it says, publishing, um, open atrium for managing an intranet, and uh, lots of other things, and there's also distributions like Acquia Drupal that comes from the, co of the uh, company Acquia. And uh, so you'll find that those are packaged with a bunch of modules. And so you, after you install it and play around with whatever they've included, you can also browse the module list and see if there's something that if you happen not to want to use that installation profile for your project, you might want to carry over into uh, an installation profile that you might be building or just for your one-off website. So uh, check out installation profiles and distributions and uh, I think that, as they say, is it. So uh, I'll ask one more time. Any questions? Any comments? Any other modules that, uh, if there's somebody a little more experienced here, would like to uh, share with the class? And why don't you so Rubik would replace Stark as the administrative theme? What's the advantage? Well, Stark is not an administration theme. Uh, seven is the built-in Drupal seven administration theme. Yeah, uh, just, just so everybody's aware, Stark is the is a theme built into Drupal seven that's meant to inspect. It, it comes with basically no styling whatsoever and just lets you look over the um, the markup that comes in Drupal. But seven is the one that's built in. And yeah, so the idea would be that you'd replace um, or well, I mean, you just install it uh, in addition to uh, to seven, and then you can set up in the settings for your themes where you uh, configure your administration theme, you could use Rubik instead. And actually, in my, uh, what I'll often do is create a sub-theme of Rubik and then make some customizations to it, um, depending on the, uh, the project. But yeah. Yes? OK, the question was, are there more modules that help out with security other than hacked? And there are a bunch. Um, I just went to uh, the, the free four-hour security training yesterday and got some ideas on that that I didn't get to put into the slides. But there's a, one of the ones they mentioned yesterday was security review module, which goes over, uh, helps you look over a bunch of security best practices for your Drupal site. Um, something that's not a module that they were talking about yesterday that I'll, you know, why not? I'll plug it. It's an Acquia service. I don't work there. But, um, but it, was, it looked nice. It's a thing called Acquia Insight which is a tool that they offer um, with your Acquia network subscription that will tie into security review module and a bunch of other stuff to inspect your Drupal site and point out issues that you might be facing. Um, but, uh, but security review module is a module written by the same people who make that, and it's, it's part of uh, Insight. So that would definitely be a, a good place to look. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, the main thing as far as security goes is stay up to date. Um, and uh, both in Drupal core and in the various modules that you install. But, uh, but anyway, as far as modules go, that'd be the first place I'd look. Yes? Is that the advantage of uh, using uh, Omega was uh, responsive theming? Is there any way I could get that with using another base theme? Oh, yeah, yeah. Zen, uh, Zen's a responsive theme, uh, a responsive base theme. I think Fusion might be working in that direction. Um, but I, I happen to love Zen. It's the one I've used a lot. I don't know very much about Omega. I just know it's quite popular. Um, but if you search the Drupal theme repository for the word responsive, um, that will bring up a bunch of uh, available themes that are responsive. But, um, but yeah, Zen's another good one to check for that. And uh, of course, in, uh, I know we're all here for Drupal 7, um, but because this is the Drupal community, everybody's always looking toward the next version. And, uh, and it's you know, being actively worked on right now. Drupal 8 is going to have a lot of, uh, you know, mobile is one of the big pushes being made for Drupal 8. So you should see both on the administration side and certainly on the public side, responsive theming built right in. Um, but for Drupal 7, yeah, that's, that's where I'd look. Sure. Yes? Um, I'm using Fusion and Drupal 7 and Fusion. 
Good. All right. So, fusion is responsive in triple seven. Anyone else? Okay. Well, thank you for coming, and uh, enjoy the rest of Drupal Camp. Where'd you go, really? Yeah, I'm presentation. Where'd the window go? Probably at the bottom or on